No, 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 not, not like that. Nope, nope. Can't forget the clapboard. What's up, everybody? I'd like to welcome you back to the Retired Gamer. I'm your host, AO is the Future. Today, I got a pretty cool topic, and the topic is going to center around how to turn the videography hobby into a viable business, right? So before I even get going, I really want you to understand that success is um, very, very subjective and objective to each person individually. So everybody has different levels of success of what is successful for them. Please don't impede on any of that because some people have uh, a high level of success where their spirit is concerned, where their internal evolution is concerned, and others have high levels of success where their family is concerned, and others value monetary things and material things, and they find success in that as well, which is all that's perfectly fine, right, in my book. So um, that's how I always approach everything when it comes to this whole entire thing i try to overlook the whole entire status and all that like i'm i, I don't even operate in that with that kind of mind frame everybody is all equal and everybody's all the same and when we get to a job when i get to a job you know i'm there to work i'm focused and i'm 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 there to to, to bring your full vision to to life to fruition so with that being said Turning the videography hobby into a business is ridiculously hard. It is not easy. It is not for the faint of heart. You have to be willing to, to hear a bunch of no's. You got to be willing to, to create a bunch of like very bad projects. Sometimes you have to have thick skin as well because what may look good to you is not appealing to everybody else. So being able to be humbled and walk with humility no matter how great you are is it's it's very very welcome around these parts where the retired gamers concerned so i don't play the game that much so since i retired from playing the game more or less i want to show you kind of like what i'm doing now since you know since my retirement i mean in my old age right so that's where all this kind of comes in at so being able to turn your hobby into a career path you have to be able to understand the way that f-stop and aperture correlate to shutter speed that correlates to iso there's like this this there's like this trifecta of science that goes with shooting and i believe that this is the very very first step towards taking that that you need to take to be able to elevate yourself from what you're doing to what you want to be doing right now i've done a lot of this <laughs> Free all the homies behind the wall. They call me nasty nitty like graffiti behind a stall. I'm Welcome nice. to the symphony. Battlefield orchestrated. Peas got infiltrated. Niggas dumping nickel plated. Shit and where they pump at. This is where you get hit with them pumps at. Dead in your face and you won't come back. Well I've also done a lot of these. I've also done a bunch of miscellaneous stuff like these. And then just walk right out. Man. Well, there's a fine line. What I even like more? 
you yes, know, please. You know, as for her, she don't need any more drink. She don't know her limits. She's always drinking like a fish. Really? Uh, someone has to drive. <laughs> Wait a minute. So I'm was that shade right there? Because you don't want me to bring it, Thomas. From the Rio Grande. <laughs> there ain't no basement at the Alamo. What the fuck you want, man? Fuck the look like, nigga. Open the door. Nah, get in the back, little nigga. What you doing over here, Mr. White Central? Nah, I thought I'd just take a walk around the block. You just walking around the block, huh? Hey, yo, who else he told you was in on this? I don't even care, my nigga. Oh, he told me that the payout gonna be sweet, and that's it. Yeah, he always say that shit. Yo, so what the fuck you got me sitting back here like driving Miss Daisy, my nigga? Nah, cause something about this shit ain't right. I'm trying to figure it out. So what the fuck does that got me do with sitting me, sitting me back here? Hey, yo. What else he told you about the night, man? My nigga, that nigga didn't tell me shit. All that nigga said, the pail gonna be sweet. And I should shut the fuck up. So what the fuck <laughs> do you think I did? I shut the fuck yeah. up. I take it he don't like niggas all up in his business and shit. So fuck that. Anyway, fuck is good with this music though, nigga. Yo, what the fuck is you doing? Fuck is you talking about? <laughs> yo, hold on, yo, time up, bro. Time up, bro. Great job, bro. Excellent. What you, what you doing? What's up? What's up? Nah, I ain't gonna hold nah, you. I know what it was. I can't control you. I'm saying, like, I got you. I got you. I got you. That's great, nigga. Well, that's the first time it's funny to see how niggas moving and shit. I ain't gonna hold you, guys. I tried to turn it up real quick. My fault, my fault. So. I think that I might be able to have a couple words of, of solid input when it comes to doing the impossible is what I call it, right? Because I started with one camera, one computer, and that's why I be saying, nobody, I don't want to hear nothing because if I can do it, you can do it too, plain and simple. So don't don't come with no excuses at all because I had one camera, the, tr the camera wasn't even really that good, you know what I mean? But we made it work, made it work. And then when I went to school, got a different camera and then I kind of kept on building up, building up but at the same time um i made a bunch of bad stuff like stuff that just wasn't good i just bashed its brains in nikki it wasn't good but you know people rock with me and, and when you have like i feel like when you approach business with with uh what i was talking about at first like not looking at status and, and treating everybody fairly and, and on the same plane um your clients, they may not realize it, but they really appreciate that. You know what I mean? And I think the reason why I say that they may not realize it is because it's more about the everything else surrounding the project. Sometimes it can be very stressful for a musician and artist to be able to, to do all this. Sometimes as a, as a videographer for a musician, you may not make what you would make shooting elsewhere. So there is a level of sacrifice, but um, I believe that uh, that when you find a good team and when you find people that you that you work really, really well with, that you click with, um, I think you should go for it. Now, any red flags along that road, you know, obviously you have to check yourself and make sure things is going well. But anyways, back at the ranch. So now this trifecta, right? Aperture, f-stop, shutter speed and ISO. ISO is how much light is coming into the camera. Now, we always want to be um, aware of how much light is coming into our environment. More about that later down the road. So, shutter speed controls motion blur. So, the higher or faster your shutter speed is, what will happen is your images will be really, really, really sharp, like, like it's sitting still. So, if you're shooting something that's moving very fast, like a bird attacking its prey, or um, somebody on a motorcycle going 150 miles an hour, you want to be able to snap it. So, if your shutter speed is where it's traditionally at, like if you're doing like um, 24 frames per second and you got your shutter speed to 48 or 50, or if you're shooting 30 frames per second and you got your shutter speed to 60, 
what will end up happening is when you go to snap that picture, your camera is gonna it's gonna be very very blurry, right? So shutter speed is gonna adjust for that. So the higher or faster your shutter speed is, what will happen is your image will be pinpoint sharp, even though you're going real fast, right? And you, you know there's a couple other factors that contribute to it too, is like uh, in body image stabilization and stuff like that. But more about that later. Now once you got your shutter speed down, know how you do that. Your next step is going to be um, adjusting your aperture and f-stop because that's going to be how much um, focal distance you have, like what's in focus and what's not. So when that number is like a 1.4, you got like a sliver amount of in focus, you know what I mean? So when you're moving your camera from here to there, everything is moving super blurry. It's, it's, it's just not, it's not uh, translating very well, right? So what you want to do is you want to increase that number from like a 1.8, bring it up to like 5.6 or 4.0, right? What will happen is now your distance of focus is going to be a lot greater than that little sliver. Now your distance is like this. So now the higher that goes, what will end up happening is you're the, the distance of focus. So if you're shooting like a landscape and you bring your um, f-stop to like f11 now you're going to be able to get more in focus and it, like so if your camera's right here and your f11 you're going to be getting a lot more in focus than if your camera was in um let's say f2.5 or something right or 2.0 it's like this you know what i mean so boom once we understand that now we can kind of start fine-tuning our craft and moving on so i'm going to